While Canada and Germany have accepted more refugees, it's a different story for much of the EU and even the stance of many Americans. To better understand the direction things are going, I'm joined by Warda Khalid from the Friends Committee on National Legislation. She's a Peace Fellow on Middle East Policy. Are, are you finding yourself humming, oh, Canada? I mean, you must be impressed. I mean, the Prime Minister himself there in Toronto, such a different stance than what we're seeing in other places. What were your thoughts? Yeah, I, I was humming it a little bit. Um, you know, what was great about it was the compassion that the Canadians showed through this gesture. And the fact that the Prime Minister himself went to the airport to welcome these 160 refugees was, was really, really great. And what he said while he was there, that Canadians are not judged by their language or by their religion, but by their hopes and their aspirations and their values, was really, really beautiful. And I think this is something that the rest of the world can embrace, uh, especially in light of this anti-refugee and bigoted re rhetoric that we're hearing a lot of, especially in the U.S., um, that there is more compassion needed and we should embrace our common humanity and help out these refugees as best we can. You, you talked about bigoted rhetoric. Well, this network doesn't spend a lot of time talking about Donald Trump, unlike some of the other <laughs> networks who seem to talk about him all the time. But we did cover the fact that he said he wants to ban Muslims and the, and the outcry afterwards, the firestorm that that created. I don't want to talk to you about Trump, but I do want to talk to you about the most recent poll, which shows him still leading the race. Uh, what does that say about a segment of the American public, and, and how does that make you feel here in the United States? Well, you know, they say fear is a very motivating factor, and I think what Donald Trump and other people who are saying these types of things have been able to do is to tap into that fear. And once you tap into that fear, you're able to make people do extremely crazy things that they may, might not otherwise have said. So things like having Muslims all register in a database or carry out a... Um, uh, uh, a voter ID or something like that. It's very concerning, and especially as a Muslim American and as a visible Muslim American, this is very concerning to me and for people around the country uh, who don't feel that they need to justify the fact that they are American and that they are members of the American fabric, uh, and they don't feel that these bigoted statements are helping the situation any, and they only lead to further violence. We've seen a lot of violence in past days. Well, and I was going to say, we're, we're talking about the United States, but clearly we're seeing this in Europe, France, uh, the Netherlands, Australia has a, has a serious problem as well. Um, how does that make you feel, and, and how do you blunt that? Yeah. What we've seen is a lot of crazy things. There was a mosque in California that was firebombed today. Uh, people in hijab are being harassed around the country. And that makes me feel a little bit scared. I'm worried about my safety. I'm worried about my friend's safety. We have to be vigilant at all times, make sure that we're not standing too close to the metro platform. And it just shows that this country is heading in a completely wrong direction, and this election rhetoric is not helping things any. So we should be looking at the conversation and trying to understand how this is affecting things. And when it comes to things like ISIS, we're playing directly into their hands. Their main point is that Islam and the West are not compatible, and this right-wing rhetoric is saying the exact same thing. So they can point to the U.S. and say, look exactly what they're saying. You're not compatible with the U.S., so come join us, and it helps in their recruitment. We uh, talked about the two R words, uh, rhetoric and refugees. I want to end with refugees. How do you think this thing is going to play out in the end? I mean, can a statement by Justin Trudeau being out there and embracing it, and we also saw it in the, uh, the main newspaper in Toronto saying, welcome to Canada, uh, does that have an impact overall? And, and how do we see this thing playing out as it continues on, do you think? I hope that Justin Trudeau's behavior and his actions are a step in the right direction and they enlighten the world a little bit into the common humanity that we should tap into when dealing with these refugees. As far as how it'll play out in the long term, I think you can look at it on two levels. You can look at it on the international level and the local level. In the international level, we are looking for a political, refu uh, political resolution to the Syrian civil war, which is causing these refugees to leave their homes in the first place. Uh, it, this is now in its fifth year, and people are beginning to lose hope. There's despair. Uh, I was at Zathari refugee camp just a few weeks ago in Jordan, where Syrian refugees have come, and it's been established for three years. And you know there is violence there, and there is depression there because people are losing hope. At the same time, it's sort of a bustling town, and they have free markets that sell everything from vegetables to prom dresses. And there is a concern that in, in five to ten years, if the war is not solved soon, this could become a permanent refugee camp, much like the Palestinian refugee camps that are not too far away. Um, and on the local level, in the U.S., you know, there is, after the Paris attacks, the U.S. Congress 
they made a statement, uh, they signed a bill saying that people of Syrian and Iraqi nationality could not be set, resettled in the U.S. Thankfully, uh, you know, Americans spoke out against this and they were concerned about it. And now many legislators have changed their position. And in a speaker, in a letter to Mr. Ryan, Speaker Ryan, uh, they've said that they are going to be welcome and they've changed their position on that. So there is some hope on the horizon as far as the American Congress goes. We're just going to have to wait and see. All right, Walter, always a delight having you on the broadcast. Thanks so much for coming in. Thanks for having me.